Hi, I received the following question. What exactly are mythical beings? And what place do they take in the hierarchy of the Golden Ladder? Well, beings like the, the Unicorn and the Griffin and the Manticore, uh, Pegasus, they're often more just like power animals in a way they're uh, different forms to for us to visualize certain qualities of our own being certain qualities of our own personality and often if you have a composite being like a being which is for instance part lion part bull part eagle part snake it is showing that there is a combination of powers that certain elements of the being become united and therefore become very powerful because of the inner harmony. Um, often also these beings are used in a moral sense to show the dangers of our animal natures, of our passions, of our instincts, of our desires. But that doesn't mean that such beings are unreal. If we look at the, um, how it works, the process of creation, is that we, in a way, in this world of form, create shapes. We have all kinds of shapes around us. Some shapes are purely imaginatory or energetical, such as yeah, unicorns and wyverns. Um, but other shapes are very physical like cars, houses, statues. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. When we create a form, whether it is purely physical or purely energetical or more often a mix between the two, then we create a home in a way for a power to manifest itself into the world of form. So these shapes which we have imagined griffins and wyverns and uh, similar beings, they can be inhabited by a power. So a spirit might choose that form and then suddenly we have a race of griffins, of wyverns, of dragons. Um, does that mean that they don't exist, these powers, if we don't imagine them? No. But then they would simply use different forms or they would create their own forms. Um, or this is how we interpret their natural form. This can also be. So the principles which we give shape in the form of a mythical animal or mythical being are often powers which are already in existence. Um, for instance, if we look at the siren's voice, the music of the spheres, the power of words already existed before people started to think of a siren. Siren is simply an embodiment of the magical powers of our voice. And by working with the siren or mermaid, she can teach us because she is, in a way, you could say a minor deity, a goddess who is representing this power, manifesting this power. But in the same way also power animals are also a little bit similar in nature. They're also manifestations of a principle in its highest or in its purest form. And as such, they can also teach us how to manifest it within ourselves. So ultimately there is not a lot of difference between a power animal and a mythical being. When we go, for instance, on a, on a vision quest to find our power animal, it is also possible that we will encounter a mythical being. And in a way, power animals are semi-mythical beings, because who ever heard of talking snakes, for instance? But the qualities of a power animal are often slightly different from these composite beings. Usually a power animal will show one specific power or talent, which is usually a part of the personality. So as such, the powers of power elements are usually quite 
um, you could say ordinary powers. They often consider wisdom, strength, healing, uh, powers which are in a way not extremely supernatural or out of the ordinary. Um, often these mythical beings they show more extraordinary powers which are more unique to an individual um, or are more magical in nature or extra-dimensional in nature. For instance if we look at the dragon, the dragon is basically a, a caretaker of an area or of a people um, and for a person who might find a dragon totem this will be also their purpose and this is not a typical human role to be the guardian or the caretaker of a huge domain. It's a rather relatively unique role. Um, it's in a way very similar to the role of a griffin but for the griffin it is usually a much smaller thing which is being protected or guarded. Um, more like for instance a sanctuary or a holy site and if you have a griffin as your power animal it might help you to take care of an altar or a temple or a church. So they guide us but in you could say much more unique uh, rather than general roles. So as to their position on the, on the golden ladder um, they're similar to guides but they tend to be a little bit higher in station. Um, so if you look at the guides, what are they here for? They're here to help us to find our, our way to not wander off the path, to remember uh, our mission. Um, slightly higher up we have already the, the power animals who teach us how to be skillful how to use our talents, how to develop our talents, how to do things in the best way possible. So it's already going more towards mastery. And the mythical animals are in a way not so much mastery of purely ourselves, but also already mastery of our surroundings or of our social role. So a mythical animal can be seen as being slightly higher in station than the power, normal power animal. Um, so they're definitely below deities. Uh, they don't have the same amount of power or the same amount of scope. Deities are teaching often a complete race of beings, um, while in general a mythical animal will have maybe a handful or a dozen students. So they're not on the same level as, uh, as deities, but their role is very similar in teaching us how to behave in a harmonious way, in a beautiful way, within a larger whole, within a larger community or society. So they teach us to be um, accepting of our unique capabilities and also of our other people's unique capabilities. And they also teach us how these unique capabilities might bring us into conflict the typical social convention. So power animals are often still very much focused on society, on the group, on the norms of the group, how to work in that social environment and already mythical animals are trying to uplift us from these social conventions and show us there are greater things, more important things, like sure everybody may hate you or revile you or think you're an idiot or crazy, but if you have to go to that church or graveyard to clean it or to bless it or to purify it. This is just what you have to do. And if people think you're crazy and talking to yourself or have delusions of grandeur, well, that's their problem. So, working with these mythical animals can bring you into conflict with the rest of society, but ultimately it is a normal progression uh, for you. So, I can heartily recommend it.